Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, AJ Two Enough, and I bring you another episode of Sports Overview Topics number 12. I am recording this in advance because AEW's all out pay per view is tonight, so I want to be able to uh, record that uh, when I can uh, and then be able to post uh, both. These videos uh, sometime next week, probably uh, both on Monday or one on Tuesday. Uh, depends. Uh, but I hope you all are enjoying the start of Labor Day weekend. Uh, if you're new, like and subscribe. Click on that bell for all notifications. Uh, and I'm here to bring you... Uh, Excuse me. Also, my apologies for no uh, NXT review on yesterday uh, for Super Tuesday. I had recorded that um, in advance a couple times, but for some reason it just wouldn't uh, upload and didn't uh, get all the way. Uh, or record all the way through the review, so I just left that out. Um, I'll get my thoughts on uh, when I do the NXT review uh, next week, uh, but uh, this is for sports overview topics. Uh, I mean, a lot is going on in the sports world uh, as we are getting closer and closer to the NFL season starting, but uh, have much of it to go over. So we'll start with the review, shall we? Um, So I'll do my NFL week one predictions, but I'll do that uh, at the end of the video because I want to save that uh, for the end. but so, starting with the news um, last week, so uh, the New York Giants signed Logan Ryan uh, as good. Um, I think uh, he probably had the third best season uh, for quarterbacks last season, besides Stephon Gilmore and Tre'Davious White. Uh, yeah, Logan Ryan, he did all with pass breakups. He had a few sacks. He had a um, few interceptions. Uh, he actually will have the last, unless he comes back to New England. But as of right now, he has intercepted the last pass of Tom Brady in a Patriot uniform. Uh but good sign for the Giants, of course. Last year they had Jack Rabbit, who had a good season, but was having a good season. But then he got released and then went to the Saints. And then, uh, excuse me, then of course they drafted DeAndre Baker, but he has uh, had some trouble in the offseason. And they're likely to release him. Uh, so getting a high price, uh, good corner uh, for a one-year deal uh, is good. Especially with the injury to Xavier McKinney. Of course, they saw Jabril Peppers in the secondary. So they have some good pieces still on defense. Uh, Larry Fournette. Of course, well, he was released or waived, excuse me, by the Jaguars last week. Of course, so uh, Trey talks last year of uh, him uh, to be traded. Um, however, um, they did not get a trade done last year and then. He did have a productive season, 1,600 scrimmage yards, 
Uh, however, uh, he just didn't fit a Jacksonville scheme, um, especially now that they got a new offense coordinator, Jay Gruden, who expects to run the West Coast offense in Jacksonville. And, you know, Leonard Fournette is that uh, ground and pound uh, type running back. Uh, he signed with Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay, they just add to that offense. Um, of course, they signed Tom Brady. They have Chris Galwin and Mike Evans at receiver. They signed uh, Rob Gronkowski, uh, our retirement. Uh, he, they have O.J. Howard, Cameron Brate. I mean, they signed LaShawn McCoy, uh, who is not who he once was, but he can still get you some yards. They have Ronald Jones, of course, who uh, had some good moments last year. Um, of course, now signing for net, there's a committee in the backfield. Um, just interesting to see how that offense unfolds. Of course, their own line is not as good as New England's was last year. Um, so that is probably the only a worrisome part of their offense. However, um, you know, they drafted Tristan Wirfs. Um, they still have Ryan Jensen and Ali Marpet in the middle. Um, and, of course, Tom Ray, um, no quarterback really knows how to get the ball out of his hands quickly than Tom Ray. So, but, I mean, you just can't wait to see Tom Brady and the Bucks week one in Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Uh, even if there's no fans, uh, it's still going to be very interesting to see Tom Brady and Drew Brees duke it out to week one. So... Some news going to the NBA. Uh, Brandon Ingram. Uh, uh, he's he was announced the most improved player of the. Uh, you know the Pelicans. Of course, when they entered the bubble, people pegged them to be the eight seed or make that run for the eight seed because they want, obviously, Zion versus LeBron in the first round would be intriguing. Of course, they kind of fell out of that race quickly, uh, and then it became the Trailblazers, but still, uh, the Pelicans, they have talent. Um, they will be there for years to come, in my opinion, if they use Zion more. Also, it are is the, the Bucks there in trouble? Um, so um, the Nuggets, well, as it pertains to the playoffs, first of all, so the Nuggets they came back, being down three one against the Utah Jazz, won that series. Um, now they're facing the Clippers week two, or excuse me, uh, game two is tonight. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, they lost game one. Uh, however, I think they'll be able to rebound and make it at least a closer game. The uh, Milwaukee Bucks, or excuse me, the, uh, the Houston Rockets, they survived. The Oklahoma City Thunder, they won 4-3 the other night. Uh, so, now, 
They faced the Lakers. They actually won last night, game one, against the Lakers. Uh, intrigued about that series. Uh, the uh, Celtics, they go up 2-1 over Raptors. They lost last night on a last millisecond uh, shot. Um three uh they're so ahead two to one but interesting series now are the Milwaukee Bucks in trouble I would say yeah the Miami Heat are up three to nothing over the Milwaukee Bucks Behind Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, uh, Bam Abadio. I mean, that offense is just being up on Milwaukee. They are the Miami Heat. I pet. I said they were my sleeper team to win it all, and. They are one game away tomorrow from sweeping the Milwaukee Bucks, who had the best record in the NBA this season. They're currently eight and zero, or wait, seven and zero, because they swept. Excuse me, they swept the Pacers. Now. Them on the verge of sweeping the Milwaukee Bucks. Crazy. So, a little bit of hockey news. Uh, so, the we're getting closer and closer to the Stanley Cup Finals and crowning a winner for this season. The uh, Vegas Golden Knights uh, last night, they beat the Vancouver Canucks uh, to win the series. And they will face the uh, Dallas Stars who beat the Colorado Avalanche last night as well in Game 7 overtime. And they will face in the Western Conference Finals uh, of the... Stanley Cup playoffs. So, pretty interesting. They have an overabundance of sports right now. It's crazy. But, uh, so, going from that, uh, the Blue Jays, to the Buffalo, excuse me, as of this bubble, they are the Buffalo Blue Jays, but the Toronto Blue Jays actually, uh, they signed Ross Stripling, or acquired Ross Stripling, Robbie Ray, and Dr- Johnny Viller. And the Cincinnati Reds, uh, they acquired uh, Archie Bradley, Brian Goodwin. And the MLB uh, standings are getting more and more interesting. The uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays are currently ahead in their conference. They took the lead from the New York Yankees. Uh, and uh, the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago White Sox are currently ahead. The Twins in their division. The Oakland A's are still taking hold of that division. Uh or their division. The, uh, excuse me, the Dodgers, the Los Angeles Dodgers, are still have the best record in the MLB. Uh, they are currently selling their division. Uh, good and good for the MLB. Back to. News about the NFL. So, 
the uh, Andy Reid and Brett Veach. Uh, they got extended, well deserved, six year extensions. Uh, of course, Andy Reid finally getting his Super Bowl as a head coach last season with that Chiefs offense. Uh, Harold uh, drove by Patrick Mahomes. Now in the, this season, they seem primed to repeat. Will they, though? We'll have to see, but good for Andy Reid and Brett Veach. Going, uh, going back to the Buccaneers, they signed Ryan Suckup, and they cut Elliot Fry and... Matt Gay, who are currently in kicking competition uh, for the Bucks, but they signed veteran Ryan Suckup, who played a bunch with the Titans. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, Joe Mixon and Taylor Decker both got extensions. Uh, Joe Mixon got a four-year, $48 million deal, $12 million per year. Uh, that's r- right behind Derrick Henry, uh, Le'Veon Bell, and Zeke, and Christian McCaffrey, which is there. Alvin Kamara, uh, I believe, He should get $14 million because he, uh, that's kind of the price tag um, or he's going for his new deal as well. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's my assessment. Because uh, whenever someone's uh, prime for a new deal, they always look at their competition uh at their position, and they see how much they've been paid, and they feel, I mean, especially if a player it thinks they're the best at a certain position, they're going to want uh, more, if not close, uh, to what the current higher, highest paid player at that position is. Uh, take Dak, for example. Take... Uh, now, Alvin Kamara, he said he wants close to Christian McCaffrey's deal. However, I don't think he's better than Zeke. I would rather take Zeke than Alvin Kamara. He's still a top five running back, uh, one of the better running backs in the league. If I if I was Mickey Lewis, I would uh, have pay. Kamara, $14 million per year. That's kind of the price tag I would go around. Taylor Decker, he actually got a four-year, uh, $85 million, or six-year, I believe, $85 million contract. Uh, good on him. One of the better left tackles in the league. Uh, definitely will be a key to protecting Matt Safford this year. Uh, the offensive line is sneaky good in my opinion. Um, if they can just uh, protect Matt Saffer, I believe they're a sleeper team for the playoffs this season. Tyrod Taylor and Dwayne Haskins have been named week one starters as well as Cam Newton. Week one starters for the Chargers, the Reds, excuse me, uh, I almost said Redskins again, but the Washington football team. Uh, and for the Patriots. Now, Tyra Taylor kind of makes sense because you want to uh, easily bring in uh, Justin Herbert if you don't feel he's ready, although... Sound hard knocks. He showed some flashes uh, in camp for the Chargers. Uh, so use a veteran. Um, they have a really good roster. 
one of the better rosters in the league. Even without De- Desmond, or excuse me, Derwin James. Uh, for another se- for another season, they still have a lot of good talent on that roster, and probably the best roster uh, that Tyra Taylor's been on, uh, besides. Um, I mean, previously his better rosters were uh, that. I would say the best roster he's been on uh, was the Ravens team that won the Super Bowl 2012 so far. But, yeah, I'm thinking that Tyler Taylor is the right decision. Dwayne Haskins, I mean, Alex Smith, of course, he's come back um, from that horrific injury. Um I saw the documentary, uh, just seeing that injury. Yes, Alex Smith came back. Um, they also acquired Kyle Allen um, in free agency. Um, so clearly, um, there's going to be pressure on Dwayne Haskins this year. Now, there's injuries and stuff like that, but I don't think Alex Smith um, is going to... If you ask me if he came back from all that um, with his leg, uh, to sit on the bench, I think that's not what Alex Smith wants. He wants to be playing for and starting for a team. So, if Dwayne Haskins um, is indeed the starter for weeks to come, I would see a trade coming in for Alex Smith um, for a cer- from a certain team. Cam Newton, I mean, look, I was, everybody that knows me knows uh, that, I was uh, conflicted and had mixed feelings uh, when it came to signing Cam Newton uh, to the Patriots. Um, And I was perfectly okay with Jared Sidham starting for quarterback this season. and I also pegged Andy Dalton, possibly. Uh, now, Cam Newton, uh, of course, he's more talented than Jared Sill. Um, can't deny that. Uh, it just will be interesting to see how the offense functions. Because we have our running backs, basically, LZ. The whole line besides Marcus Cannon uh, is a full go. Um, yeah. Well, we cut Mohamed Sanu the other day. Uh, and I don't think that was really an indictment on Sanu. That was more a testament to because I've been hearing good things from about the other receivers the last few weeks with Julian Elman, Nikhil Harry, uh, Jacoby Myers, uh, Gunnar Oshuski. Uh, I mean, Demir Byrne, he has shown flashes in camp as well. Uh, so yeah, it should be interesting to see how that offense functions. My opinion, I mean, it's so and so. We'll have to see how it ha- happens week one against Miami. So, we'll see. Deshaun Watson, or before I touch on Deshaun Watson, Brock Lesnar is now a free agent. Now, 
he it's interesting because well his contract right now with WWE um I mean what does Brock want to do? Um you know he could resign a new deal. Um it's just what he wants to do. Does he want to go back in MMA? Uh what it's unlikely, but it would shake up the wrestling world if he went to AEW. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see what Brock Lesnar wants to do. Now, touching up on Deshaun Watson, he got his extension, well deserved, a uh, four year, $160 million, $40 million per year. Uh, Honestly, um, I'm happy for him that he got his money, but that situation in Houston, uh, I'm not too keen on. Um, I wonder um, if it's the best spot for him because Bill O'Brien being the head coach and the GM, that has just not been... We'll see what happens this year with Houston. Because, of course, everyone knows they were ahead by 24 nothing in the second quarter versus uh, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, and they blew it within the blink of an eye. Uh, But, yeah, Houston Texans, we'll see how... They fair this season. Um, I have them as a 500 team. But, yeah, we'll just see how they go. And Keenan Allen uh, also got an extension. Um, he got a four-year, $80 million contract. Uh, works for him. Um, it's kind of strange because... Uh, it's the same money um, Michael Thomas is making, but it's just one year uh, on the pose, actually. Uh, yeah. But well deserved for Keenan Allen. He's a top receiver in the league, and he well, very well deserves it. So now I want to save it for last. I want to do my NFL Week One uh, schedule predictions. Uh, so sorry, I'm just looking, make sure I got. Uh, News correctly. Oh, yeah. As well as Michelle Trubisky uh, was named the starter for the Bears week one. Now, some probably pegged that Nick Foles uh, should have been the starter week one. But, oh, well, I guess we'll have to see. See if, well, the Bears, uh, they had... A bunch of things go wrong for them last season. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just Trubisky. It was the offensive line. Of course, Kyle Long uh, got hurt, and then the offensive line just never recovered. They have... I thought they would be a front runner for Larry Fournette. Um... Uh, because I mean I like David Montgomery, but they I don't know if he's actually an all alpha when it comes to the running back position. Um, they have Allen Robinson who's a number one receiver, but they don't really have a number two. Uh, 
I mean, Taylor Gabriel, he was good, but he kept getting hurt. Uh, and their tight ends were dropping on the fly last year. I mean, it was just tight end after tight end after tight end. Now they have Jimmy Graham and they drafted Cole Komet. Two, from what I heard from, uh, or from what I seen from Jimmy Graham, he said that uh, that Cole Komet reminds him of a younger him. If that's the case, then cool as for Chicago. But it should be interesting. If they have the correct game plan for Trubisky, I think it will work. But yeah, now the last thing for uh, this episode of the podcast, uh, my NFL Week 1 predictions. Uh, I saved it, it for last, so... So this Thursday starts off a better reveal night. Houston Texans back in Kansas City to face the Kansas City Chiefs, reign defending champions, as they start their title defense. Now, of course people know that... Like I said earlier in the video, that the Texans squandered a 24 nothing lead in the playoffs. But what some people might forget is that Kansas City lost to Houston last year, 24 or 31 to 24. So that's an interesting development. Now. Both offenses are loaded. I will say that. But what people forget is that as well as Kansas City's defense got better as the year the season went on and Steve Spagnuolo's scheme definitely helped the Chiefs defense. No offense to Bob Sutton, but the scheme worked better. Uh, for the Chiefs, and as well as Honey Badger, Frank Clark, uh, Chris Jones, they signed him. I just think Kansas City wins. Um, I think it could be, it won't be a blowout, but I think it'll be semi-close. I think it's somewhere like 35 to 28 Kansas City now the first game of the Washington football team well and plus when you talk about that Kansas City Chiefs game 22,000 fans are 22% I think it's 22,000 will be led to the stadium. So I would think a majority of that will be Chiefs fans. So, yeah. So the first game of, or now going into the Sunday games, the first game of the Washington football team, we got. The Philadelphia Eagles coming to town to face the Washington football team. Um, Phil, Philly, of course, last year, uh, Carson Wentz pretty much dragged them to the playoffs. Uh, they haven't even played a game yet, yet they've already lost. Significant pieces, uh, you know, Andre Dillard, Brandon Brooks. Um, they have to piece around that line. Um, 
Yeah, but I think they still have enough uh, to win uh, this game. Uh, Washington, they obviously have good pieces. I like their front seven, uh, especially after drafting Chase Young. They have a lot of pieces, you know, Montez Sweat, uh, Brian Kerrigan, Rod Payne, uh, Jonathan Allen. They have some good pieces, but I just think when it comes to offensively, uh, Carson Wentz is enough to, plus they just draft or activated Alshon Jeffrey from the pup list, so she should be healthy. I'm going with Philly to win 26 to 20. Over the Washington football team. Next, Miami at New England. Now, I don't think, I mean, I might have missed it, but I have not heard anything about Tua or Ryan Fitzpatrick starting week one yet. Um, if this was in Miami, I'd probably be a little more worried. However, uh, despite the losses on defense, um, I think that we'll just have the edge um, uh, in New England. Uh, Cam, I think he'll definitely uh, be able to extend plays unlike Tom Brady because uh, Cam Newton is mobile and Tom Ray relatively isn't. With that said, I think it will be a interesting game. Uh, probably uh, going New England to win 23 to... Hmm. 23 to 15, or excuse me, 14 for Miami. Green Bay at Minnesota. This is another intriguing week one game. Of course, Green Bay, they won the division last year. Made the NFC Championship game, but they did not look like a 13-3 team that made the NFC Championship game. They were a good team last year, but they didn't really uh, look great in any areas. The Vikings, I mean, they Kirk Cousins had... Probably his best year last year. And David Cook was running side. Um, of course, they beat the Saints in that overtime thriller. The playoffs. However, that offense line got ravaged by the 49ers the following week. With that said, I think it's in Minnesota. Um... I think that that run game, Dalvin Cook will look to prove a point and they'll get the nod over the Packers 27 to 24. Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Philip Rivers' first game as a Colt. Should be itching. 
At the same time, a lot of people are wondering if the Jags are tanking. Gardner Minshew said that they're not going to let that happen. I think the Colts are capable of being the one seed. Um, I like Gardner Minshew. They have some talent on that roster. However, I think the Colts win solid here. 31 to 20 for Jags. Chicago at Detroit. Bears, of course, I mean, some agree, some disagree, having Mitchell Trubisky as quarterback this season or starting week one. However, that people fail to realize that that defense is still a Super Bowl caliber defense. Uh, see, Detroit has a lot of talent, and I think, but this is week one. Um, maybe things will be different, but I think 20 to 17 Detroit over Chicago. Next, we got the Las Vegas Raiders in Charlotte to play the Panthers. Interesting. Teddy Bridgewater's first game as a Panther. They got a sneaky good offense um, in Carolina. I mean, of course, they got Chris McCaffrey. Uh, they signed Robbie Anderson to pair with DJ Moore. Uh, they got Curtis Samuel. They got some good pieces. And, of course, the Raiders. They got Josh Jacobs. They got a nasty old line. Um, Tyrell Williams, he got hurt. Um, but they got some... A interesting trio at tight end. Um, I think this will be a down and dirty fight of the game. Uh, I think that hmm. yeah, I think that Las Vegas gets the win 20 to 16 over Carolina. Jets at Bills. An interesting division game. Uh, you know, a bunch of hype going in for the Bills this season. Can they win their first division title since in a quarter century? Um, they had a really talented defense. Can Josh Allen make that step? And where is Sam Darnold and that Jets offense as well? I just think that the Bills have a better roster in front, and I'm going with them to win over the Jets 27 to 21. I think Sam Darn will make it close, but I just think they have a plow better roster the Bills do. Cleveland at Baltimore. This is a favorite to win game of the week. The Browns I'm high on. 
the Ravens. Of course, we all know Lamar Jackson was the MVP. Um, however, they got out fiscal in the playoffs by Tennessee. And it was kind of the same way last year against the Browns. Uh, their first meeting. And I think that if well, Stephen, Kevin Stefanski, I think, can employ the right game plan and they ride through that offense line and Nick Chubb, I think they can uh, take a win from the Ravens. So I'm going with Cleveland to win 33-27. to 27. Seattle at Atlanta. This is kind of a tricky game for me because Seattle, of course, Russell Wilson uh, are always in it. Atlanta, of course, they have a lot of talents. They have who they finished strong last year, but I just don't know where they're at when it comes to. Momentum. Yes, they start strong, but or finished strong, but they started off really sluggish. I just believe right now more in the Seahawks week one. So going with the Seahawks to win twenty eight to twenty three. Chargers at Bengals. Joe Burrow's first start against a talented pack in the Chargers. Now, the Bengals have talent. They do have some quality receivers. They have A.J. Green, whom they have Tyler Boyd. They have John Ross. They have on tape. They have some quality receivers. The alpha, that offensive line is the question. Jonah Williams is coming back, but it's only their left tackle. So, and they do have some talent on defense. They do have Gene Atkins. They do have Carl Dunlap. They signed DJ Reader, and. Mike Daniels. So, but I think it will be close. I think they'll make it competitive. <sighs> I believe in Joe Burrow. So, I'm going with him to win over the Chargers 20 to 18. I may regret that, but oh well. Cardinals at 49ers. Now, the 49ers, of course, they were up 20. To 10 in the Super Bowl. And Mahomes was Mahomes. But the roster is stacked. Cardinals. I believe are. One of those surprise teams. That will make the playoffs. This year. However. And they gave the 49ers fits. Last year. They had one possession games. Uh. Both times last year. Now. Hmm. I think that. I 
I think that Kyle Murray, because um, we saw mobile run, mobile quarterbacks give the 49ers defense fits in Russell Wilson and Kyle Murray. And if, say, play here or there, I think that the Cardinals can steal in Levi Stadium with no fans. I think the Cardinals edge it out 24 to 21. Or actually, excuse me, 27 to 24. There you go. Arizona. Next, Tampa Bay at New Orleans. That sells itself. Tom Brady versus Drew Brees. A lot of firepower on offense to quality defenses as well. See, this is week one, so anything can happen. However, I think with no office season program, uh, no preseason, I think that The Saints, with their continuity, with their they edge out the Buccaneers in a shootout, thirty six to thirty one. Next, the first Sunday night football game of the season. The Cowboys and and the Rams and the Rams first game of the of the Coliseum. See the Cowboys. They have a loaded roster. And the question will be, is Dak going to get that big contract that he wants from Dallas? Because he turned down a bunch of money and he's betting on himself this season. They have a stacked roster. Uh, The Rams, you know, they lost Todd Gurley. Um, he wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Um, the offense line hasn't been the same since they went to Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, they got new pieces on the offense line. They d- drafted some quality pieces. They drafted Cam Akers, Van Jefferson. They still have Alphas on defense. They still have Jalen Ramsey. They still have Aaron Donald. The question will be is can Jared Goff bounce back this year? I think that based on talent and based on there will be no fans Probably in attendance. I got Dallas winning 24 to 20. Are the Rams. Next, we go to the Monday night doubleheader Pittsburgh going to the Maylands play the Giants. Now, The Steelers, now, 
Big Ben uh, will be returning that defense. Uh, played really well last year, especially after the trade for Minko Fitzpatrick. Uh, Big Ben, we'll have to see where he's at. Uh, the Giants, I think, are another surprise sleeper team that can make a run for the playoffs, especially their division. Uh, but that said, if their offensive line is better, that's the key. If the old line is better. However, I think right now I'll go with the Steelers to win 34 to 26 over the Giants. And then the last game of week one is an interesting one. Tennessee going to Denver to play the Broncos. Now, Tennessee, of course, Derrick Henry had a terrific season last year, as well as Ryan Tannehill, who kind of rejuvenated his career, got a big extension, and Drew Lock at the Denver Broncos. I mean, people are high on Drew Lock. Uh, of course, Jerome Casey, it'll be interesting to see how he fares against his former team after they dumped him for a fifth rounder. Um, you know, Bradley Chubb should be healthy. Vaughn Miller they acquired A.J. Boye. However, I think Tennessee is so primed to be here. So I'm going to go with Tennessee 27 to 19 over Denver. So that's my... NFL Week 1 predictions. I got Tennessee winning. The Eagles winning. Patriots winning. Vikings winning. Colts winning handily. Detroit winning closely. Um, the Ra Raiders. Bills. Browns. Seahawks, Bengals, Cardinals, Saints, Cowboys, Steelers, and Titans. So there's that. Some will agree, some will disagree. But those are my NFL Week 1 predictions. And with that, that concludes the video. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, this was fun. Um, we're almost there, football season, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and I'll be back on.